on the web at fivestarsoap.com or call 800-340-7091. Take my word for it. Once you've used pure soap, you won't buy anything else. Since 1947, Calvin Soap Company has been showing consumers that soap can be tough on dirt and gentle on the environment. Buy American and stay clean. As well as support InfoWars, visit 5starsoap.com today or call 1-800-340-7091. Well, Marty, what do you have to say? As founder and owner for over 63 years, satisfaction is guaranteed or double your dirt back. Call us at 1-800-340-7091 for a free catalog or visit our website, 5starsoap.com. Thank you. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator. Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded. And now new socialist legislation is only compounding the problem. Number four, dangerous weather is always a threat to local grids. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five, a solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solutions from Science, one of my oldest sponsors. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun, so go to mysolarbackup.com or call 1-877-327-0365. Listen up, friends. This is Alex Jones with Key Information. The mainstream media is now admitting that we're going into a depression. Don't be dependent on the government for you and your family. You need to get your own supply of high-quality storable foods from eFoodsDirect.com. They're the best company out there, the longest continually operating, with a ton of great food to choose from. It's all fresh and made on a monthly basis, not some old cruddy food they're selling you like some of the other guys. Try their new evacuation pack, a two-week supply of delicious, easy-to-fix food. It comes with all the equipment you need to prepare it. With open talk of a strike on Iran in the next three months, the crisis in the Gulf, and possible evacuations, get yourself and your family ready today. The place to go is eFoodsDirect.com. Go to their website online right now, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex, or call 800-409-5633. Again, on the web, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex, or give them a call at 800-409-5633. We've got it. This transmission is coming to you. Waging war on corruption. All right, you are go. It's Alex Jones. Coming to you live from the front lines of the info war. It's a video emerging that we want to bring you. It demonstrates uh, what can happen when a basic need of an immigrant community, such as shelter, clashes with the need of a state to maintain order. And I have to warn you, I've yet to see someone watch this video and not react in some shock. It, uh, it occurred about a week ago when police in a northeastern suburb of Paris tried to evict a group of squatters from a housing project scheduled for demolition. Take a look. So the demonstrators are from Ivory Coast. Uh, we want to make it very clear that in showing this, we are not accusing the police of racism. We are not implying that they use excessive force. Several people who saw this video questioned why mothers would have infants, children on their backs in such a protest. This is simply an example of the difficulty one region faces in dealing with its migrant community. Now, in fact, French authorities had offered the protesters temporary accommodation in hotel rooms whilst their cases were evaluated. The video was shot by the group Right to Housing. I talked a short time ago with spokesman Michael right. Hall. I began by asking him... So there's the whitewash. They can't just show you a video. By the way, African women in, in any you know, uh, group in the third world, that's how you carry your babies is on your back. You know, they've got them tucked in uh, to their backs. These are poor people. They don't have the expensive strollers and things. So, see, it's their fault that police were dragging their children 
and their babies and grabbing them by their arms and tugging them with extreme force when there was no need to do that. They're just slowly conditioning you to accept all of this. And it's all about the state dominating every facet of our lives. Here's one uh, from Oregon Live, the Oregonian. Portland lemonade stand runs into health inspectors, needs a $120 license to operate. And it says the seven-year-old Julie Murphy of Oregon City still smiles about her enterprise despite running afoul of county inspectors for an unlicensed lemonade stand at last Thursday. But then all the illegal aliens who work at the work sites, they don't have to be inspected or have to have any licenses. It's only citizens uh, that are kept to these standards. It's hardly uh, unusual to hear small business owners gripe about in licensing requirements or complain that heavy-handed regulators are driving them into the red. So when the county shut down an enterprise last week for operating without a license, you might just sigh and say, there they go again. Except this entrepreneur was a seven-year-old named Julie Murphy. Her business was a lemonade stand. And last Thursday month, art fair in northeast Portland, the government regulation she violated, failing to get a $120 temporary restaurant license. That's just like in Sacramento for a four-cent unpaid tax bill. Armed IRS agents came out not once but twice threatening them. But then when Goldman Sachs steals tens of billions, they don't get in trouble. But you don't pay four cents, they're coming, they're angry. Because they want to keep you in line. Little girl, you're not going to have a lemonade stand that makes $5. You're going to pay us 120 to do that. You didn't pay a four-cent bill. Well, we didn't know about the four-cent bill. Don't we get due process? No. We're here for four cents. Because the government puts all the inspectors on the little people, so they don't inspect the big guys. Here in Austin, they'll come harass you if you're watering on the wrong day during water restrictions. But then big corporations, they can just have sprinklers on you know, three or four times a day, broken sprinklers, nobody gets in trouble. It's you, the little people, they're training to keep in line. Okay, let's go to your phone calls, and then I'm going to get into EPA left to pick up climate change where Congress dropped the debate. Oh, Congress won't pass the law, so outside the law, the EPA is just going to enforce these on the American people. But it won't be enforced on all these other countries. What will that do? Make industry move there. That's the plan. Uh, that We'll be covering that. Uh, we'll also get more into Virginia police. Uh, illegal immigrant charged with killing none after injuring two others in car crash. Uh, that is coming up. Uh, more mainstream news on gender-bending chemical in food tins may cut male fertility. And it's also in 40% of receipts uh, that you're being given. And they say just a little bit of contact with this can reduce fertility or sterilize men and increase ca uh, cancer. That's the state of uh, Maryland's own analysis uh, of that. Uh, so, uh, also, Newsweek reports, will this phone kill you? And they're just letting you know, yeah, cell phones do give you brain cancer, but that's just the way it is. Uh, so we'll uh, be breaking that down uh, as well and a lot of other important news today. But right now, let's go to your phone calls. Let's talk to Victoria in Montana. Victoria, you're on the air. Good morning. Thank you, Alex. I have two things to tell you about and one question to ask you. Uh, the first one I wanted to tell you about TSA, what they did to me. You won't believe this, but in the, in the airport in uh, North Dakota, a TSA man actually hit me. Well, of course he did. <laughs> I know mean, he's letting you know that they've been told, crack some skulls, let them know to submit. I mean, I was in uh, Billings at the airport flying out and they were just screaming at women for one ounce of perfume or one ounce of uh, lotion. They dug through my bag and screamed at me and I said, listen, lady, your sign right there says three ounces and she shot up real quick. They're there to let you know you are their property. So, so, so tell us, tell us who hit you. Uh, one of the TSA men, what happened was I, my uh, carry on that went through made this, you know, ringing sound. And so they said, oh, it got to be something in here. So my key to unlock it so they could look in, in there to see that there was nothing there but my jewelry bag, I reached over to, to zip the little top pocket so I could give him the key, and he grabbed me by my arm 
hit my arm and slung it, and I was so appalled. It was all that I could do to keep from slapping his face. And if you'd have talked uh, back, they'd have taken you in the back room and beaten your brains out and dashed around I the know. blood. I know. So I, I was like, just, I've never been back to that airport again. Now, the second TSA person in Atlanta, Georgia, I'd already been through the checkpoints, you know, everything. And uh, sitting in the airport, had just went up and bought one of their bottles of water since they made me throw the other one away. And uh, he came to me and said, I have to check this water for a bomb. I thought, are you kidding me? I said, I Oh, yeah, that's the new thing. Even after you go through, they then harass you. And it's to train them that it's normal. It's to train you that it's normal. And uh, this is just being done everywhere. But uh, listen, I do not want to fly through George Herbert Walker Bush Airport. I've flown through twice. Once I came in out of England uh, on a continental flight, and literally, it was like being in a concentration camp. There were crazy TSA people screaming at everyone, saying, hurry up. People were unpacking things as fast as they could. The TSA was wild-eyed just on these crazy power trips. And then my parents flew to a wedding with my 85-year-old grandmother who had polio in the 50s. She can barely walk, but she makes herself walk on crutches. They enjoyed screaming at her at George Herbert Walker Bush Airport. And uh, so this is how America works. I mean, and I've seen it in San Francisco. I've seen it in other places where when they see an old person in a wheelchair, who they scream at them, they make them get up, family tries to help them. A lot of times they can't get up, so they scream at them, and it is a, it's a vampiric orgy of evil. And this is all our indoctrination. Then they herd you through the radiation bath, Hardcore radiation and you know top scientists, testicular, breast cancer, skin cancer. Uh, they record your naked body. They lie to you, and routinely they beat people to death behind closed doors in Canada and the U.S. If you talk back, and then uh, that's just the end of it. But but so 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 he comes over and says, "I got to check your water." That's right. And so I told him, you know, I just bought it. It was twenty ounces. It only has like a couple of ounces left. What could be in here? So he goes. Uh, open it up, and I'm going to check it, have this little toolkit uh, thing. Everybody was looking, and so uh, I opened the bottle and let him do his testing, and then just to show him that I'm not being trained, you know, like a dog, I did it in plain view, put the top on it, went over, and threw it in the trash, and then went back and, and uh, you know, sat down. Have you read about the- how thousands of women have been made to drink their own breast milk? Uh, of course, I've been through airports before they totally ban walking through with the water, and they say, take a drink, and it's an act of submission. And I'll go, no, it's all right. And they go, oh, let me check it since you want to throw it away. It's all about their control. You're being trained as a blood bag to submit to the vampires when ordered because they're the low-level vampires training you for the bankers to fully suck you dry. They're kind of the Renfield uh, enforcers uh, of Nosferatu. And of course, they, they're being brainwashed that this is all uh, normal. But all over the country, they tell women, what's in that baby bottle? Well, it's, it's milk. Drink it. Well, well, no, it's it's my milk. But then the mother knows she's pumped milk. She's about to be on a six-hour flight. She can't, she's, she can't get it out in the bathroom and pump again. And so she, they'll go ahead and submit for their baby. And, all right, I'll drink my own milk. And the cop's just like, next it'll be your urine whore. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's just like, they're gonna, we're going to take your insurance money and we're going to take everything you've got and we're going to shut down lemonade stands and we're going to shut down people selling watermelons on the side of the street and we're going to SWAT team the Amish and take their kids and we're going to take your property and we're going to, I mean, they are just, and we're going to drug your water supply and make you submit. I mean, can you believe how crazy it's gotten, Victoria? I can't. I, I, I'm just really shocked that people allow this, that we're like, you know, people just won't draw the line in the sand and say no. And I mean, we have to because of the way things are accelerating. If we don't, we're going to be in real trouble. A second, I wanted to tell you about a sneaky way that children are being classified and set up for academic failure and big pharma drugs in public schools. This is a good one. Okay, I, I taught junior high and high school first and found a large number of students couldn't read. So I had to actually teach them phonics, 12th graders, 9th graders, 7th graders, before I could even teach regular subject matter. Because by design, 60 years ago, they got rid of phonics, the true way to teach people, and made it be by visual, as if a child's supposed to recognize every word in the English language magically, which is hundreds of times harder, literally, instead of phonically doing it. Please continue. 
Okay, so I started uh, teaching uh, kindergarten so I would be able to reach children early so they could start their education with a solid foundation.